What's going on everyone? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan, and welcome to the match review of Chelsea's loss. The 1-0 loss in the London derby. That's right, Chelsea versus West Ham in the Premier League at Stamford Bridge. Frank Lampard putting his young Chelsea side against his boyhood club, West Ham. He probably wanted to smash them about, but he lost. Yeah, no good, right? Today, I'm going to be talking about what happened and really what didn't happen and posing some questions to you guys, but this is... A frustrating one. <sighs> oh yeah, before we get into the video, remember to subscribe to Football Therapy if you have not yet subscribed. Please do click that bell notifications icon. Like the video, even though Chelsea lost. Let's just get into it. Like I said, Chelsea at home. Haven't scored as many goals at home as they have on the road this season. But, you know, even though they're winless in two at this point, they're looking pretty good. I mean, they look good at City. They look good at Valencia. They look frail. But they look good. So you think, right, West Ham have been pony. This is the time to, you know, sink them, score a load of goals and have a lovely time. Oh, well, things just don't work out the way you want them to. I'm going to run you through how this game went, but <laughs> I'm going to sort of just tell you how I feel on the way. So let's open the analysis screen. You know what, dude? I took so many notes on this game, like quite meticulous notes about how the game was going, but because we lost, and because there's a sort of greater message to talk about in this, I'm not really going to read any of them. Remember, next to me is the Who Scored graphic. This is basically all the stats from the game to give you some context of what happened. Basically, I want to let you guys know, in the first 25 minutes, it looked awesome. Like, it looked awesome. It was all, Chelsea were all over West Ham, great attacking combinations. Probably should have scored a couple of goals. But that is really the story of Chelsea's, or a lot of Chelsea's season, this season. Looked really great offensive combinations, it looked dynamic, but that finishing touch, yeah, not there. And what really hamstrung Chelsea in this particular game, I think probably cost Chelsea the game. Yeah, I'm saying it now. I understand why he did it, but this is hindsight obviously bringing in Olivier Giroud and Pedro. Now I get it, Chelsea are playing a lot of games that senior good players in their own right, very good players in their own right, but they haven't been playing Lampard ball really. Oh, put my bloody phone down. And that final sort of element of attack was lacking and Giroud, until he came off later, he was a complete passenger man. He was a complete passenger. I love Olivier Giroud, I think he's an excellent player in his own right, but I've maintained on this channel, and I've said it so many times, and on my other channel, Jan Plays, he doesn't suit Frank Lampard's football, and he was literally a passenger in this game. Sure, Chelsea dominated midfield and got the ball up quite a lot, Chelsea frailed defensively often, but they had so much possession in the first half, Pulisic looked really good. Mason Mount looked really good. Jorginho looked okay. Kovacic looked really good. Reese James in that first half looked like an absolute, the best right back in the world. <laughs> he won six out of six dribbles in that game by far more than anyone else. And he's the right back. Usually you get that from wingers. We've got wingers like Pulisic, hudson Adoy, Mason Mount can dribble. Kovacic is an amazing, amazing? Amazing dribbler. But it was Reese James teaching him all how to do it. He might have got a bit burnt out or frustrated with how the game went in the second half, but really in terms of when Chelsea was super dominant in that first 25 minutes, for me, Giroud and Pedro playing. I mean, Pedro did get himself in some good positions because he's an experienced attacking forward and he's very nimble. He made these great movements, probably not normally what Chelsea play, why it broke down, but again, it's a chemistry thing, and Giroud, like I said, was a complete passenger. I understand Batshuayi hasn't been playing too great recently, and I said Giroud might start this game, but in hindsight, if you just look at player profile against form, you think, just don't, don't waste your, you know, your plan on playing Giroud. I kind of think that might be the last time we see Giroud now. So anyway, James was good, Mount was good. There's a bunch of people that were good in the first half. Chelsea had loads of shots, West Ham had no shots. Chelsea had loads of possession, West Ham didn't have much possession. A frustrating half. But the last 15 minutes, say, of the first half, West Ham showed that they can do something on transition, and they were, once they settled into the game a little bit, they showed they could do bits. Obviously, early into the second half, Creswell scores the only goal of the game. It's from a moment of transition, he's on the overlap, he receives the ball, he's got nothing on, so he chops inside and curls it into the corner. It's a good goal. I mean, Chelsea demonstrated poor defending 
a lot of times in this game, but it wasn't necessarily that moment. It was a good goal. And it's at this point I want to talk about West Ham have been so, 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 so bad recently. Like, Pellegrini was, like, next on the sacking list, maybe. But they were resolute, and they were playing to a much better level. And you know what? They didn't have the worst goalkeeper in the world in goal. They had Martin in goal. This guy who's played a million games throughout the different football league leagues. And he had a good game. Anyway, Chelsea sort of endure moments of difficult pressure from West Ham on transition or counter-attack, but they keep knocking on the door, but a lot of the time they look like they were running out of ideas. Frank Lampard does use all three substitutions in this game. He takes off Jorginho, who is a bit a bit meh. I understand how they didn't necessarily need his awareness in this game. They needed someone with a bit more cut and thrust. And he brought on Kante for him, so Kante and Kovacic could advance forward. I think probably Kovacic went down a little bit more. Mount was obviously already playing in the 10 role, trying to create. Pedro came off for Willian. I understand that as well. Lately, Willian, he, he sees so much in Lampard's game of the ball. A lot of it goes through him. People get frustrated with him, but you can understand how he feels more comfortable with Willian on the pitch because he does see so much of the ball and maybe Frank Lampard just feels safer like that in an offensive kind of way. And Giroud comes off, and I'm pleased he came off, but he didn't come off for uh, Batshuayi. He came off for hudson Adoy, which I was actually quite intrigued with. Giroud had to come off, right? Um, but who's going to play striker for? Pulisic played as a number nine, so I thought, okay, cool. Three rotating wingers, maybe like the force nine, just keep interchanging and moving. Sweet. Bearing in mind, Pulisic played pretty well in this game. He got a few chances, a couple maybe he should have scored, but he was playing well. Turns out, for me, it was a bit of a wasted move because Pulisic, he didn't really rotate as much with the wingers as I would have liked, and he literally hung out in the number nine spot, and therefore he was a sort of fizzling out a little bit. Obviously not as much as Giroud was. Anyway, Chelsea don't deserve to win this game. You see in the match stats, they had dominated you know, the open play stats, but they obviously conceded that goal. They conceded what seemed like a second. They got overruled by VAR from a handball. That really was poor defending from Chelsea. It just goes to show you can have all the ball and attacking moments, but if you don't have that cut and thrust, then you don't deserve to win the game. In that opening 25 minutes, it looked like Chelsea were gonna win the game three or four nil, and this was the West Ham of recently. West Ham dug in, they got the goal, they showed moments of attack attacking threat on transition and they showed loads of great defending. There's five minutes stoppage time, there probably should have been more, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Chelsea get a couple of chances, but really, gamesmanship, good defending, and an all round good performance see West Ham over the line for a 1-0 win at Stamford Bridge. Let's talk about this a little bit more, let's get rid of the analysis screen. Right, one thing for me that I don't really know what to feel about, and I tweet this out, is Chelsea didn't have any fouls, like fouls conceded. West Ham had like 16 or 17 or something. Now I thought, right, is that Chelsea being like really well disciplined and obviously having most of the ball, therefore you can see less, or are they not just getting stuck in enough? They start so well in terms of moving the ball, but I just feel like there was that little bit, no matter how much of technical ability they're demonstrating, and they demonstrated a lot, good combinations, there was that little bit of just grit missing to be like, no, we're gonna get one goal now, even if it's like 10 minutes of time, you know, the crowd will lift, because. Stanford Bridge went flat, man, and you can understand why in a way. You can critique fans saying they should always back the team, and they probably should, but when you see this frustrating performance, it's hard to get behind the players. Anyway, if Chelsea scored one, they could have well scored another and won the game. I don't want to go through this video without praising Kepa. He made two excellent saves. Uh, and there was one point where he, the second excellent save, he actually made a follow-up claim on the ball from Antonio. He, from all the criticism he's received recently, he played really well today in open play. Obviously, he saved the penalty in Valencia, that was great, but people still criticised him on a couple of moments. But in terms of just being an open play goalkeeper, he was very, very good in this game. If he was in poor form today, Chelsea could have lost like 3-0. But at the other end, Chelsea got very unlucky that <laughs> the calamity goalkeeper was not on goal and Martin had a pretty solid game. He didn't make any outstanding saves because Chelsea didn't create any outstanding chances. Good chances that they didn't take, but he had a good game in there. So, a lesson for Frank Lampard and the boys. Not just, I think he's gonna, he looks seething Lampard because he could see, yeah, great, we're moving the ball well, but we're not, 
he, they weren't doing what he wanted. We know what Frank Lampard wants because we've seen him do it for 15 years as a player. He will be frustrated with the youngins. And to be honest, man, I think Frank, the kids will learn a lesson, Chelsea will learn a lesson as a whole in terms of playing against opposition. But really, I think a lot of, a lot of it comes down to simple things like, I don't think Frank Lampard's going to play his type of football, or he shouldn't do if Giroud's on the pitch. Now I know Reese James had an immaculate first half and looked really, really good, and he can play in balls to Giroud, but that wasn't working. Giroud was the ultimate passenger. Pedro, great runner, great industry. He's still very intelligent, but both of them in their own right, Giroud and Pedro, still great players, great player profiles in terms of their skills and attributes but they're a bit old, they're not as mobile as they were, even Pedro, and they don't suit the way Frank Lampard wants to play, or certainly haven't been coached enough in Pedro's case. So, what do you think? Frustrating, I think Chelsea will just pick themselves up and move on. Get down in the comments below, let me know your thoughts and opinions, and help me out, like the video, subscribe if you are new. Remember to subscribe to Yam Plays. I'll put the link in the, in the top of the description. Follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. We go again midweek. Enjoy the football. I'll see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chalk. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby